Do you have to speak like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to say welcome to BBC One. Hello and welcome to BBC Radio One. Uh, no, uh, my first. <laughs> We're not in the war. Can you <laughs> news just in? There's a film called <laughs> A Quiet Place, and it's out now. <laughs> what other titles did you consider for A Quiet Place? Don't fart. Right? You knew that's where you wanted me to go. Written down right there. No. Um, <laughs> Emily. Yes. What if you didn't call this film A Quiet Place? What would you have called what it? What would I call it? Silent, silent Anxiety Attack. <laughs> Something like that. That's actually really good. I so think we should uh, retitle this. Can you imagine how that's going to look? <laughs> It'll work. So it really gets the punters in. Yeah, it does, yeah. I'm looking at my suggestions here and they're nowhere near as good. Tell me. Shh. Oh, it sounds a bit seductive, though. The way you maybe it's the way, maybe it's the way you did it. Could we convey that on the poster? Yeah, like with you winking. Yeah. Shh. Why not? Done. Shut up. Shut up. But with yeah, two Ds. That's a good one. So shut up. Shut up. Perfect. Shut up. Ooh, that's aggressive. It is a bit. But you know who loves it? Who? Kids under fourteen. For sure. They'd be like, we're going to see Shut Up. No, you <laughs> shut up. Oh my God, it's a movement. Four tickets to shut up. <laughs> um, zip it for Austin Powers fans. Okay. All right, zip it. You, don't, you can't even- Zip it. Zip. S-T-F-U, which is kind of unpicked by a poster you guys- S-T-F-U. S-T-F-U. Shut up. We mustn't say it. Very rude, BBC. BBC, keep it fresh. And my final one, which I actually saw on a poster and ruined this joke, STFO. Mm. Mm. But it's supposed to be STFU, right? Yes. So but... I've, I've, I've missaid it out loud. <laughs> so it's written down that. Wow, this is BBC? I know. I thought it could be better than this. Come it on. should be. Right now your bosses are going, what they... is he doing? Please fire him. What I... has happened? Speed, 23 seconds. My question to you is, how hard is it not to crack up on this film? Because <laughs> it's Do you mean crack up like go crazy? Well, because <laughs> there was that. Both, I imagine, actually. Yeah. First question, not to break and laugh. Second question, to break your mind. My mind was broken. Mm -hmm. um, we did laugh a lot between takes, but actually during it, we were pretty much in the pocket. Get we really it. were. I got to say, there was only one scene. And the only reason why, we, we took it very seriously when we were shooting, I think because certainly my wife is mm -hmm. wildly professional in that <laughs> she is able to snap out of it immediately. Yeah, the scene in the poster where she's in the bathtub, we did one take. Yep. Very intense. Couldn't believe it happened. Felt almost bad for putting her through it. Then I call cut and she goes, do they have chicken for lunch? What is it? And that's a true story. I'm not kidding. So we were always bringing levity to the set and which really helped the movie. He loved it. He loved it. <laughs> the number of stories I hear about being on set and people are just thinking about lunch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all we're getting to, right? That's all we're trying to get to. You wake up. Who cares if the movie's good? Do they have fajitas? That's the question. <laughs> you might sell this film better if you change the name to Free Food. Yeah, Free Food. Ooh. Now we're, now we're there. Uh -huh. Full circle. We got there. Are you a bath person or a shower person? Well, after this film, a shower person. I just cannot imagine you getting in a bath and not thinking. I kind of want to do for bathtubs what Steven <laughs> Spielberg did for water <laughs> swimming in general. It's a good mission to have. I yeah. think you succeeded. Oh, good. I will encourage everyone I know to watch it, and then we'll make that happen. Okay, great. Done. Okay, no problem. Oh, Is it unusual for you, obviously you've been an actor for many years, but does it ever become normal to be acting off nothing? Because you obviously have an alien in the room, and you have to be like... Well, I don't know if you know this, but... John was very often put in a mocap suit with his enormous beard hanging out at the skull cap, and he would be the alien for us. 
Is this so thrilling for you to hear? And you're telling me you never laughed? No. <laughs> because that gun was really heavy. Ah. And I didn't want to have to do it again. It was partly <laughs> that. Um, but it, I, I would laugh if I was watching it behind the monitors because it was quite funny seeing, you know, we were doing shots of like, and he'd, ha he'd also be holding the monitor. So it would be on his back, on the kids or on me. And he would be holding them on to see where his body was in the frame, like multitasking. And then it would start on his foot and then go up his foot. And often he'd be wearing just like his Vans, <laughs> just Vans sneakers Comfort. with the mocap suit, then up to a full beard, <laughs> side view of him roaring, you know. I think it's a tradition of that because in the yeah. original Alien film, they are proper Nike high tops. Proper. Because you've got to be comfortable. No, you have to. Yeah. Look like an idiot. It would have been better if he was in Crocs. That would have been... <laughs> Pure gold. I was thinking about that. What are the shoes to wear in the apocalypse of A Quiet Place? And I think the croc choices. The croc could be good, but aren't they a bit squeaky? I think they're a bit slappy. Slappy. <laughs> oh, how did how did she die? Oh, she wore croc. No, they were sl she was slapping about on She's the sand. <laughs> yeah. You know her. She's always slapping about. <laughs> So I'm one of the many people who have seen the film, lucky me, yes. and, and love it. Oh, good. So I'm going to do this thing, which I like to do every so often, which is, Emily Blunt, could you tell me why this film is so brilliant? This film is so brilliant for many reasons. It is the most suspenseful, intense, and emotional experience that I've seen people having in a while. That's good. That's good, particularly if you renamed it. What was it again? Panic living. Silent anxiety attack. <laughs> the silent anxiety attack. I feel like if this was released in like in between the wars as a silent film, <laughs> and you're about to watch silent anxiety attack. Silent anxiety attack. Fresh from the front. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love this film. Thank you. And I was wondering, as silly as this sounds, could you just talk about how great it is? Can I talk about how great it is? Yeah. That's such a good idea, and I really would love to do it if my Catholicism wasn't overriding <laughs> my brain right now and said, if you say one nice thing about this, you will not sleep tonight. Um, no, I will say, <clears throat> here's what I love about the film, and I mean this truthfully. There is an element to how nice everybody has been about this film that is very hard to process for me. And it's a fundamental thing that I realized, which is when you're in high school mm -hmm. and you think something's cool, Let's say you put on a t-shirt that you think is cool and you're going into the school. Mm -hmm. There's that moment where you're like, it's pretty great, right? And then as the door opens, you're like, what if no one else thinks so? And so the fact that we're going into the proverbial gym uh -huh. and people are like, I also love your t-shirt. It feels like that to me. I know what you mean. You do. I do. You're wearing the bright eyes t-shirt and you go, uh-huh. Mm. And then the door opens and everybody goes, that was last year. And you go, oh, God. <laughs> what? That was the, no. <laughs> You've made a huge mistake. We only know him as Connor Obers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's Desaparecidos or bust. Get out. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> that was one of my favorite interviews ever. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast, Screen Time, on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>